Hello and welcome back to Mini Maths, where we do a lot of maths thinking in a little bit of time. Today's topic is fractions. This is what we should remember from fractions from our last episode. A fraction is a part of a whole. The important idea it has to be equal parts and a fraction can be on a number line, it can be in a group, it can be a group of you know, three quarters of 16 apples. Uh, the big idea is fraction is sharing and dividing equally. And another way to show division is by expressing it as a fraction. So if we take one thing and cut it into two equal parts, it is the same as doing that and the result is a half. Now, fractions are very busy numbers because they turn up in lots of different ways. We work mostly with proper fractions and that is where the numerator, the number at the top, is smaller than the denominator, how many equal parts there are. You can have improper fractions where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. And of course, what happens when you have an improper fraction it will result in a mixed number where there is a whole and then there is a fractional part. You can recognise a whole number as a fraction because the numerator and the denominator are equal. That means five fifths, two halves, four quarters, ten tenths will always end up equaling one whole. Equivalent fractions, more busy fractions, because you can see a quarter it could look like any of these and what we look for is the proportion and this is where we bring our table. What proportion of 5, uh, sorry, what proportion of 20 is 5? So it's a quarter. Bit difficult, we can come back to that another day and of course there's a whole new family of fractions called decimal fractions and percentages but that's for another day. Have you ever thought that if you know one multiplication table and you understand that 3 times 4 equals 12 is 3 groups of 4 equals 12, that you can do a whole lot of other mathematical problems? Here is one example. Here are 3 groups of 4. One group, two groups, three, three groups. And each group has one, two, three, four things in them. Here's another way of showing three groups of four. There are four, here are four, and there are four more. And that's a counting pattern as well. For example, four, eight, and twelve. So to do fractions, you need to know your tables and your patterns. So if you know one multiplication fact correctly, how many other facts do you know? Now, I want you to notice that three groups of four, as we have here, is the same answer, but a different arrangement. Here, we have one group of three, two groups of three, three groups of three, and four groups of three. So what we're doing is we are using um, a rearrangement of the numbers to get the same equation. And here's all the different ways you can use that in fractions. And I'll let you look at that, but you can use the multiplication fact, three groups of four, to know all these other facts, remembering that that is another way to express a division sum. And of course, here's more. And there are many, many more ways to use one table fact like that to get lots of other facts like that. Now, let me have a look at another way of organising uh, multiplication tables. Here are rows and columns. And if you know that three groups of five or five groups of three equals 15, you can do a lot of other maths. This is an activity we did on the online lesson and it was a lot of fun. We asked DECV students to create as many 
multiplication, division and fractional equations as they could from this group of objects. Here are some of the ideas they came up with. Then we talked about being very careful because I can change the order of 4 times 6 and 6 times 4. The answer will be 24. I can't change the order of 24 divided by 4 and 26 divided by 4 and get the same answer. And I can't do fractions or division. And you think of, you've got four things, you divide them equally amongst 24 of your very best friends, you will end up with a fraction. You need to think about that. Now, to really start working with fractions, you have to have these understandings. Multiplication, division and fractions are based around equal groups. Knowing any multiplication tables will help you with division and with fractions and with a lot of other things. Multiplication, division and fractions are connected, so you've got to look for the connection. A fraction problem can also be a division problem. So 20 divided into four equal groups is the same as a quarter of 20. And if you take four things and share them equally with 20 people, just visualise that, you have got $4 and you want to share it with 20 people, nobody is going to get a whole dollar. And to solve a maths problem, you have to understand, think and check your answers. And I usually do that by visualising, by counting, by taking groups and checking in other ways. Now, this has been a busy session because fractions are very busy numbers. Thank you.